So hi everyone and welcome to the Sound Logo Production Masterclass, um, which is part of Wikimedia's contest to find their Sound Logo via a global contest. Um, so this Masterclass is here for anyone and everyone that would want to enter um, and we hope that it will give you the essential information and skills that you would need to know to create your sound logo and to put it forwards into the mix. Um, so today we're going to be taking you through all of that um, and we're also going to be showing you Wikimedia's creative brief. Meet the team. So we are from Massive Music. We are a global creative music agency founded just over 20 years ago and we del deliver everything that a brand would need to know in the field of music, sound and voice. And we are particularly interested uh, and specialists in sonic branding, which you're gonna hear more about today. Um, behind the scenes on this project, we've got a much larger team working on it, but today we just have Joe and myself presenting. So my name is Emma and I'm an account and project manager in the London office. Um, and I've been working in collaboration with the Wikimedia community and the foundation team, helping to bring this um, contest to life. And I'm really excited to bring it to you today. And I'll pass over to Joe. Yeah, hi everyone, I'm Joe Bush. I'm a senior creative strategist at Massive Music. Um, I've been working in Sonic Branding for years and years now. Um, and yeah, really excited to get this project uh, underway. Thanks, Joe. So basic audio terminology. So we thought we'd start here and really give you the key terms that you would need to know before diving into music production yourselves. Um, so number one, we've got track. So track really simply is just a long form piece of music. So it's anything from a one minute pop song to a much longer symphony or opera. Um, but today we're going to be focusing on sound logos, so not a track, uh, and sound logos are much, much shorter, but we'll talk about these more shortly. Key, major and minor. So this uh, is a term we often use to describe chords, scales and key signatures. And the easiest way to describe the difference between these is, is to hear the emotion within it or a piece of music. So if a piece of music sounds particularly happy or bright, it's often going to be in a major key. And if it sounds more sad or melancholy, it's probably in a minor key. Um, and we've got two examples here for you now. The first is a major chord and the second is a minor chord. So hopefully you can hear the differences. Next up, tempo or speed. So I'm sure many of you know that um, tempo is the Italian word for time, and it simply means the pace or speed of the piece of music. Um, in musical in music, we often uh, measure this in beats per minute or BPM, or more simply, we could describe it as up tempo or down tempo. So we now have two examples for you. The first is up tempo, and the second is a piece of music that's slower and it's down tempo. Instruments and timbre. So instruments are simply the tools that you would need to be able to cre create a piece of music. So this could be anything from a violin, a piano, an oud, or even your voice. Your voice is a really powerful instrument that you can use to create music. And when we think of instruments, we also need to look at timbre because timbre is the characteristics of the sound. So two instruments could be playing the exact same note, the exact same amount of time. But they will sound different because of their timbre. Um, and this really gives them the tone or different uh, tone or feel to it. And it may be why a composer may choose to use one instrument over the other when creating a piece of music. Um, when also talking about instruments, we need to think about whether it's real or synthesized. So a real instrument is, is a live or an acoustic instrument maybe that you would record in a room and then use within your composition or an electronic uh, instrument is simply electronically made music. Um, so we've got two examples for you now and the first is acoustic and the second is electronic. Sound logo. So this is why we're all here today and it's hopefully what we're all going to be creating. Um, so a sound logo simply is a brief short collection of sounds, chords, melodies or beats uh, used to identify a brand through sound. So what it means is that a brand doesn't need to rely on any visual cues, it just within a couple of seconds, a very short amount of time, they will be recognised through just that short sound. Um, and to give you an example, I won't be able to play it, but if you think of one of the world's largest and well-known fast food brands, they have a very iconic sound logo. Concept. So this is your big idea. It's the story, your creative concepts. Um, so when you're thinking about a piece of music, what is your big story? What do you think that composer wanted to represent through their piece of music? Um, if you think of a piece of 
music you particularly like, the story and the concept behind it would help to give it more resonance with you and a greater connection. Um, and when we think of sound logos in particular, the concept really helps the brand tell that story um, to their audience in a very short amount of time. Cut through. So when we're thinking about cut through, we're asking ourselves, does it stand out? Does it cut through the noise of anything else that's around it? So a good example of a piece of music or a sound logo that has good cut through is if you were sat in something like a hairdresser's and a radio on in the background, does a piece of music or a sound logo particularly stand out to you? Can you hear it above anything else that's going on? Often, if a sound logo has particularly good cut through, it's normally more distinctive, it's more memorable, and it also has greater recall, which tends to mean you could hum or sing it back after you've heard it. Emotion and tone. So this is a really easy one. It's um, all around the feelings that it evokes, that piece of music. Um, and when you're thinking of sonic branding, we really want to make sure that you're trying to evoke the right emotion and attaching that to the brand through the sound logo. So now that we're familiar with all those different musical terminologies and terms, um, we can start thinking about our musical language and how we start talking about music. So Joe and I spend many hours of our days talking about music and evaluating music. Um, so we're gonna play you two different um, examples uh, and then talk about them afterwards. Here's the first one. So if we were going to critically evaluate that, something we might say would be, I feel that the track is high tempo, but lacks emotion. And the next one, so I will play it first and then talk about it afterwards. So we might describe that as the guitar part is great, but perhaps a little less rock. So when we're evaluating music and also when you're creating music, it really helps to think of music in this kind of critical way. And so for this, if, imagine you had a brief and someone created this piece of music. If you wanted to critically evaluate it and the briefs say we would like it to be less not a rock song, you would then maybe look at the instrumentation in this example. So you may take out the bass guitar or to change the timbre of it, you may use um, an acoustic guitar over an electric guitar. Um, but now that wraps that section, so I'll pass over to Joe. Thanks Emma. So what are sound logos? Well, let's start by looking at where it all began. Um, it began years and years and years ago um, with uh, the cereal brand on the left. Um, they had a very, very well-known jingle um, in the uh, 1920s, 1930s. Um, and this was really prevalent. It became very popular and people started singing and, and knowing this jingle. Um, this led other brands to doing similar things. Um, and the jingle, you know, this, the, the brand track really was born. This continued all the way up until the kind of mid 90s where we reached jingle or soundtrack saturation point, really. There were so many brands using so many different songs. It was really hard to cut through as a brand. And then in comes uh, the mobile phone on the right and that brand. Um, the way that this brand started using sound with ringtones and UI sounds really was the new frontier in Sonic branding, um, adding product into the mix um, and making it something that was livable outside of just the television or the radio. And now we live in an audio driven world. Um, podcasts, sound on social media and in-home devices. Um, we're listening to sounds all the time, listening to music all the time. Um, so it's really important that brands use sounds and music in, in a smart way um, so they can be a part of this conversation and stand out. So a nice little stat um, about sound logos and why they're effective. Well, people react to sound 17% faster than they react to visuals. Um, this means that we can really infiltrate the, the, uh, the brain um, and the mind really quickly and really powerfully with sound. Um, we can make people feel things um, in a really quick way and also stand out against all the visual noise that's around us every day. So why use a sound logo? Well, it operates directly on the subconscious and is therefore the most effective way to modulate emotions. The right sound logo will also add depth, um, significant emotional depth. Um, to how the movement is perceived. So this would be really helpful for Wikimedia um, in terms of giving this more, more uh, emotion really behind the brand. 
So let's have a look at an example of two sound logos. Um, we often define them in two very simplistic ways, melodic and atonal. Um, and let's have a listen to what we mean by a melodic sound logo now. So you can clearly hear a melody there, a kind of arpeggiating chord going up and then landing on the, uh, the first note again. Clearly melodic, something you could sing, something you could hum, something you could whistle. Um, and then we also have atonal as well. Um, and this is where we remove all kind of melody um, or harmony and focus on more just pure sound design, really. So let's have a listen to that. So you can hear some percussive sounds in there, some kind of sound effects in there as well. Very short and snappy, um, but very different from the melodic example. Storytelling through sound. So why is storytelling through sound important? Um, if we could just move on to the next slide, it gives your sound logo a really unique identity. Um, if you start telling stories, you can start translating the movement's values um, into sound. So what this means for Wikimedia is that the sound logo will be really individual um, and it will have greater meaning. It will mean something for the Wikimedia movement. So we've given some examples of storytelling through sound um, for this for this presentation. The first one is an example brand. So the brand that we've come up with, this fictional brand, is called The Optimist. Um, the Optimist is a non-profit news organization. Uh, they share only good and positive news headlines through their app and online publication. So our brief for the sound logo of The Optimist could be how to capture the sound of optimism and positivity. So there's a few different ways that we could do this. Um, optimism and positivity. So potentially it could be a rising sound that moves upwards in pitch or in volume. Maybe it's an angelic sound that also feels digital. Um, remember they have an app and an online um, presence, so that would be important. Or maybe it's just an open free guitar strum in a major key, really like accentuating that the idea of happiness and positivity by using that major key. So we've got some sound examples of what these could sound like. Um, let's start with the first one, a rising sound moves upwards in pitch or volume. Okay, and what about the angelic sound? And then lastly, an open free guitar strum in the major key. So there are three example sound logos for The Optimist, this brand that we've, uh, we've made up, um, and all following that story of representing optimism and positivity in sound. There's three different ways that you could hit that brief. Music production overview. So what we're going to do in this section is look at music production in a bit more detail and look at the technicality behind creating a sound logo. Starting, we're looking at production platforms or DAWs. DAW stands for Digital Audio Workstation, and this is what we use to manipulate and create sound um, using computers. There's five listed here. These are all um, free and available for you to use um, free of charge. We have five different options, Ableton Live Lite, um, Audacity, which is also open source, um, Waveform, Tractition, Pro Tools First, and Cubase LE. All really great, great um, tools to use. In this presentation, though, we're going to be using Ableton Live Lite for our examples. So firstly, we're going to look at recording. Um, recording is a big subject. Um, you know, you could go into so much detail on this, but really we're going to break it down to the bare bones today. We're going to look at microphones and we're going to look at MIDI. So we're going to look at microphones first. And I think you all know probably what a microphone is. Um, this is a device that you can use to transfer acoustic sound within an environment into digital um, data and record it into your computer. Um, and then we're going to look at MIDI as well. MIDI is a digital language, um, which means you can convert notes that you play on a piano or impacts or impulses that you play on a, on a drum machine, for example, into information that a computer can then use to transcribe that to an instrument or a sound. So we've got two examples of this. The first one is the microphones example. So let's have a look. So that's me simply sat where I am now at my desk with Ableton open, hitting record with a microphone and clicking my fingers three times. 
um, and that's now rendered into Ableton um, and I can use that sound however I like. Next up, we have the MIDI example. So let's take a look at that. So there's the MIDI example. Um, that was me just playing what's called a MIDI keyboard, which is a, a keyboard that you can plug into your computer. And I'm just playing through the, the white notes on the major scale there. Um, what we do is we can use that data. We can use that data we've played in and we can put that onto a drum kit or a xylophone sound or a synthesizer, anything you like. Um, so you can start creating melody um, and, and music that way too. Next up, editing. Um, so editing, we're going to break this down to four different areas. So adjusting audio, uh, so moving it around, uh, cutting, copying, and pasting. So those three are something that you'll probably be familiar with. You know, we use them all the time in uh, Word documents or spreadsheets as well. Um, and it's the same with audio. Um, we can move audio around, we can duplicate it, we can shorten it, we can paste it, we can do lots of things with audio. Um, and we've got a video example of me doing some editing um, on the next slide. So let's have a look. So here we are back in Ableton with my clicks. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm just going to cut the audio at the start of each of those click sounds um, that I've recorded in. And the purpose of this is so that I can drag them um, and create a sort of very, very simple beat out of the clicks. At the moment, they're all over the place. They're not to a tempo, but I'm going to move them next to each other onto our grid you can see i'm going to shorten that last one and i'm going to duplicate it and then we can play through and we'll hear a pattern so whereas before that was just loose and random now we have a four by four beat on the grid with the clicks and it's starting to become more musical Next up, we have mixing. Um, again, a huge subject. Um, really, you know, you could talk about mixing for days and days, um, but we're going to break it down to a very sort of simple overview. Um, there are five sections we're looking at. So volume, so you know, the the how loud or quiet a sound is. EQ, which stands for equalization. Um, and this is where we start thinking about a frequency spectrum in sound. So low frequencies, high frequencies, and we can turn those up or down depending on what kind of effect we want to create. We then have compression. Compression is similar to volume, but what we're doing is we're automating volume parameters within the sound. So we're making everything the same volume or everything the same quieter volume or rising in volume. There's lots of different things you can do with compression, but it's a very useful tool um, that saves a lot of uh, you know, hard work and personal time. We've got reverb. Reverb is about creating space environments within sound. So you know, what's it sound like if you click your fingers in a, in a cathedral compared to your bedroom? That's what reverb is. It's that space around the sound. And then lastly, we have delay. Um, and delay is kind of like an echo. Um, so it's when a sound repeats. Um, after you hear the source sound, it can repeat for, for ages and ages or just a short little delay as well. So we'll have a look at these in action in the next clip. So here we are back in Ableton with my clicks um, that I've just lined up. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to add some EQ. Um, so we're going to take out some of the low frequencies in this sound. Okay, so we've removed some of the low frequencies there. We're then going to add a compressor and bring all of these clicks up to the same volume. Okay, so much more even there. Then we're going to add um, some reverb uh, to create some space around the sound. Okay, so suddenly we're in a larger environment. And then lastly, adding a delay, so some echo. Can hear that sound repeating as it tails off at the end and what that does also um, it can be used in a creative way to kind of add some sense of rhythm or, or more complexity to the sound too so the wikimedia sound logo um so this is the the project that we're working on um and you know what we can uh, are going to be basically asking people to to submit um and yeah we're really excited to hear the submissions that come through for the different sound logos um we're going to go through a bit of the brief um for this project now um so we're starting with the objectives so firstly we want to make sure we're future proofing wikimedia for audio only platforms as we discussed earlier um we'd like to create positive sentiment around the wikimedia movement through this project 
And we'd also love to invite a global audience to engage with the Wikimedia movement and its projects. So we want lots of people involved, we want a diverse um, set of contributions for this project, definitely. So the brief in a bit more sort of technical detail, obviously we're going to create the sound logo for Wikimedia. Um, it should be between one and four seconds in length. In terms of formats that we're accepting, we're accepting um, WAV files, MP3s or OGGs. You should use original sounds that you've recorded or played, um, or you can use uh, copyright free um, samples which have been provided as well. The sound logo should contain multiple layers, textures and sounds. So ideally it's not just going to be one sound, it will be sort of build up of a few different ones to create something truly unique and original. We want it to sound global and not pertain to one particular culture or style, you know, we want this to be sort of culturally agnostic if possible. And of course, it should represent the Wikimedia movement. So we've got some creative prompts to get yourself started. Um, similarly to how we did with The Optimist, um, we're going to look at this, but in Wikimedia. Um, so we want you to imagine the sound of these five things. Uh, the first one is connections forming. Secondly, we have this idea of question and answer. So, you know, sort of call and response idea. What about the sound of trusted information? So what does trust sound like? free and open knowledge. So that could be a starting point as well. And then lastly, knowledge growing. So this idea, you know, one idea expanding um, and, and, and growing over time. We also have some tonal prompts. So how the logo should feel. Um, we'd like the logo to feel human, um, inspired, smart, and warm. And we're looking to avoid anything that feels too technological, too cold, synthetic, or aggressive. Um, so just things to keep in mind when you're working on your own sound logos that um, you can keep referring back to these, these terms as well to kind of keep you on track um, and make sure that we're along the right lines. So we've got some examples um, of creating some logos for these prompts. Um, we've got two that we're going to share with you today. And the first one is knowledge growing. And we're going to go back into Ableton um, and have a look at how we could create a sound logo that represents knowledge growing. So let's have a look. So we're back in Ableton. We've got the uh, the clicks that I recorded, um, dragging those back in. And we're going to do some editing just to start lining those up, similarly to how I did earlier. This time, we're just copy and pasting that first click onto the grid. We've got three clicks in a row there. OK, but I'd like that to be a bit slower. So I'm just going to create a bit more space between the sounds. And I'm also going to automate the volume of the clicks to rise up over time. Okay, so we have three clicks in a row. I'm now going to record some MIDI to record a virtual instrument into Ableton. It's just one note there. Um, I'm going to go into the MIDI here and I'm going to duplicate that one note to match up with those click sounds that I recorded. So there'll be a layer on top of that original sound, something with a bit more kind of tonal content. Okay, so now our three beats have the, uh, the melodic sound as well. And then I'm also going to add a chatter samples. So this is uh, one of the royalty free samples. Um, and this is the sound of people chatting in a room, really. I'm going to underlay this underneath our three beats, and I'm going to make the volume rise over time. It's a little bit quiet, though. So I'm just going to turn up the volume of that individual sample. Okay. And there we have it. So let's have a listen to that knowledge growing logo on its own here. Okay, so this is an example of, you know, sound that kind of expands, it grows over time. There's also sort of this idea of like knowledge and humanity in there with that, with that layer as well. Next up, we have the example for connections forming. Um, so let's go back into Ableton and have a look at creating this one. So this time I'm going to start by recording in some MIDI on an African uh, bar instrument. And what I've done is I've recorded a chord there in MIDI, um, but I'm using an arpeggiator as part of the instrument to make it move between the notes in sequence rather than just having one chord playing at a time. So it'll move between those, those three notes that we've recorded as, as the chord plays. I'm just lining it up here to make sure it starts on the grid and in time. That's great. Mm -hmm. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to automate a parameter on the instrument so it gets brighter as we move through um, the sound. So it'll start a bit duller and end slightly brighter to create some movement. Okay, so getting brighter over time. 
And then we also have this kitchen clock sound, um, a royalty free sample um, that I'm going to use as a layer to kind of add a sort of very thin beat underneath this. What I'm going to do is here in Ableton, um, I'm actually going to use the warp function in Ableton, speed this sound up so it's a faster click. Um, so you can hear that underneath, but it needs to be a little bit louder. So I'm going to turn up the volume there. And I'm also going to add some reverb. Okay. I'm going to automate the volume of this as well so it gets louder over time. And I'm going to take out some of the low end on the sound as well in our EQ. I'm also going to just compress the click sound to make it a bit louder consistently. Okay, and I'm just going to add one more effect here on our MIDI instrument, which is a filter. And um, just to create a little bit more of a sense of movement over time. Um, so we're going to sweep through low to high frequencies here. There we go, so a bit more movement. And that's our second example. So let's have a listen to that in isolation. Okay, and there's the Connections Forming logo. Thanks very much, Joe. Um, and yeah, thank you everyone for watching. Um, we really hope, you, that, hope, hope that you found this useful um, and we're really looking forward to hearing your submissions coming in over the next few weeks. Um, and if you have any more questions, we hope that the FAQ section on the contest platform will have all the answers that you need. Um, so yeah, that's it. Thank you very much.